Welcome to MSU video. In this series of video lectures, we are going to discuss about graph theory and its applications. Graph theory is used in many real world applications. So we will discuss all the applications while we are discussing the graph theory terminologies. So let's start. So in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about some introduction part of graph theory. First of all, we all know that a graph contains set of vertices and edges. A graph normally called as a linear graph also. So a graph G equal to V comma E, V contains set of vertices. It can contain any number of vertices, E equal to E1, E2 up to E3. For naming purpose, I am providing it as E1, E2 up to, it, can, it may contain any number of edges also. The vertices VI comma VJ associated with the edge EK is called as a N vertices of EK. And edge is which is connected by using two different vertices. That's what we are calling it as a N vertices. Graphs are represented by using a digraph. Vertices are represented as points and edges actually a line segment joining two vertices. So this is an example for a normal linear graph. So in this graph, I am having five vertices V1, V2, V3, V4 and V5. And then I am having seven edges. So for this edge V1, V2 and V2 is a N vertex because this E1 is actually a self loop which is starting from V2 and which is ending at V2 itself. For this edge E2, the N vertices are V2 and V4. So we are starting from V2 and then we are ending at E4, V4. It is undirected, so you can start from V4 and we can reach V2 also. If it is directed, you can't travel in the reverse direction since it is undirected. Either we can move from V2 to V4 or we can move from V4 to V2. So these for all the edges, I am having those end vertices. Any edge having same end vertices are said to be a self loop. So as we discussed in the previous slide, here E1 is said to be a self loop. End vertices are same for any edge, then we are calling it a self loop. Any two edges having same end vertices are said to be parallel edges. So here, the edges E4 and E5 having the same end vertices. E4 is also starting from V1 to V3 and E5 is also starting from V1 to V3. So E4 and E5 is called as a parallel edges. If a graph does not have any self loop or a parallel edges, we are calling it as a simple graph. So now we are providing a restriction. Normal graph can, can contain any number of edges and any kind of edges. Now we are restricting ourselves. If a graph does not have any self loop or parallel edges, it is called as a simple graph. Here it is not actually a simple graph, it is a normal graph. Then we will discuss about the applications of a graph. Graph are used in many real world environments. So these are the some of the examples which is used by using a graph theory. So first problem is a Konigsberg bridge problem, an utilities problem, electricity network problem and then a seating arranging problem. These problems were solved by using graph theories or otherwise we can say that these problems are represented by using a graph theory. These problems are the real world problems which can be solved by using a graph theory. So Konigsberg bridge problem, it is solved by the mathematician Island. Here we are having two islands C and D formed by the Prigal river in the Konigsberg are connected to each other and the, to the banks A comma B with the seven bridges as shown in the figure. So now we are having four land areas A, B, C and D. All the things are reversed. So there is fixed a path available from A to C. There are we are having two different paths are available. From B to C we are having two paths are available. C to D one path and D to A one path and D to B one path. The actual problem is we have to start from any four cities, walk over each of the seven bridges exactly once and return to the starting point. So if I am starting from this A, we have to walk each and every bridge at maximum one time and once again we have to reach A. So this problem is represented by using a graph for by, use by the mathematician Euler. After representing that, he identified that this problem can't be solved. So there are some reasons other we will discuss about this later. So once the problem is represented by using the graph means you can easily solve the problem. And second problem is utilities problem, three houses, H1, H2, H3 each connected to the three utilities, water, gas and electricity. It is possible to make such connection without any crossover conditions. 
So it is it is actually a problem. We are having three houses and then we are having three utilities are there. We have to connect each and every utilities to all the other houses without crossing over each other. So this problem is also represented by using the graph. So here I am having six vertices are there, each and everything is a edges. So it is also not possible, but it is represented by using graph data. That's what we are discussing. And then electricity network problem, the nature and volume of the elements forming the network such as resistors, inductors, transistors and so forth. The way elements are connected together the topology of the network. So if A is connected to B means it may be any component, then I am drawing a edge from this. So by the electricity networks are also represented by using a uh, graph. Then we are having a uh, seating arrangement problem. N numbers of a new club meet each day for lunch at a uh, round table. They are meeting uh, uh, for a lunch at a round table. They decide to sit such that every member has different neighbors at lunch. So how, how many different possible arrangements are there? So if I am using n equal to 6, by using graph I am representing. So the adjacency is represented by using the edges 1 to 2, which means that 1 and 2 is sitting together on day 1 and 2 and 3 is sitting together, 3 and 4 is sitting together, 4 and 5, 5 and 6, and 1 second 6 and 1. Then what I am doing is, I am interchanging the result. So 1 is connected to 3, 3 is connected to 5, and 5 is connected to 2, and 2 is connected to 6, 6 is connected to 4, and 4 is connected to 1. So here I am having two different solutions are there. So if n equal to 5, then this is by using the graph, I am easily solving this problem. n equal to 5 means I am having two solutions are there. So that for any n value, we can able to construct different set of graphs, and then we can able to identify the results for it. If n value is odd, then there exists n minus 1 by 2 possible solutions are there. If n is an even number, then there exists n minus 2 by 2 solutions are there. If you better check with n equal to 9 and n equal to 10, you will get this much amount of results. Then by using the name itself, we can identify what is a finite graph and what is the infinite graph. A graph with finite number of vertices and finite number of edges is called as a finite graph or otherwise we are calling it as a infinite graph. These two graphs are infinite. For our convenience, we will concentrate only on finite graph. We are not going to worry about this infinite graph. And then incidence and degree value. This is, these two terms are very important while we are discussing all those graph theory concepts. When a vertex V i is an n vertex of some edge E i, then V i and E j are said to be incident with each other. Let me say that if I am using the edge E 4 and then the vertex V 1, this is actually meeting here. So this is we are saying as incident with each other. Here. So no, uh, no uh, two non-parallel edges are said to be adjacent if they are sharing a common vertex two non-parallel edges. So if I am considering E4 and E3 are sharing a common vertex, it's V1. So we can say that V4 and E3 is adjacent to each other. So edges E2, E6, E7 incident with vertex V4. Consider this vertex V4, E6, E2 and E7. All the word, all the edges are incident with V4. Edges E2 and E6 are adjacent. Similarly, we are having different adjacent uh, edges are available. Edges E2 and E6 are adjacent. You can't say that these two edges are adjacent because it is actually a parallel edges. And then obviously the degree value, the number of incidents on a particular vertex is called as a degree value of a vertex. Number of edges meeting on those particular vertices is called as a degree value. So degree value of V1 is actually 3, E5, E4 and 3. Degree value is actually a number value. It is not indicating uh, what all the edges are meeting, it is indicating just a number. The degree value of this V1 is actually 3. Degree value of V2, so here E3 is making one incidence, E2 is making one incidence, E1 is actually making two incidents because it is starting from V2 and ending at V2 itself. So for self loop we have to consider the degree value as 2 and degree value of V3 is 4, V4 is 3 and V5 is 1. So the total degree value summation of i equal to 1 to n degree value of every vertex is equal to 14 for this particular graph. So by using a formula we can represent which is equal to 2 into number of edges. So the total degree value of a graph is 2 into number of edges. Then the different types of vertices, isolated vertex and then a pendant vertex. So a vertex having no incident or you can define a vertex with uh, degree value of 0 or otherwise a vertex which is not connected with the graph is called as a isolated which is isolated from the graph is called as a isolated vertex. So you consider this vertex V4 and V7, V4 is not having any degree value or otherwise V4 is not connected with the graph and similarly V7 
is also isolated because since V7 is looking like present inside the graph but it is actually isolated. Isolated means that you can't reach that particular vertices. That's what we are saying as a isolated. So V4 and V7 is called as a isolated. Then pendant vertices, a vertex having only one incident is called as a pendant vertex. Or otherwise, a vertex with a degree value 1. So we can say V3 is actually a pendant vertex. And then null graph and then no graph. A graph with no edges are said to be null graph. Which means that the graph contains the vertices alone. Or otherwise, a graph must contain all the vertices are isolated vertices. Then we can say that it is actually a null graph. A graph must contain at least one vertex. Otherwise, it is not it is defined as a no graph. So a graph may be allowed without any edges, but a graph not allowed without any vertices. So if a graph does not have any edges, then the graph is called as a null graph. If a graph does not even having the number of vertices, then we can say it is, a, it is not actually a graph, it is no graph. Thank you for watching. Keep on visiting my channel. Thank you so much.